Welcome to our continuing series, Fine Poetry. Poems Today and Bradstreet, Part 1. Contemplations. Some time now passed in the autumnal tide, when Phoebus wanted but one hour to bed, the trees all richly clad, yet void of pride, were gilded o'er by his rich golden head. Their leaves and fruits seemed painted, but was true of green, of red, of yellow, mixed hue. Wrapped were my senses at this delectable view. I wist not to wish, yet sure thought I, if so much excellence abide below, how excellent is he that dwells on high, whose power and beauty by his works we know. Sure he is goodness, wisdom, glory, light, that hath this underworld so richly dight. More heaven than earth was here, no winter and no night. Then on a stately oak I cast mine eye, whose ruffling top the clouds seemed to aspire. How long since thou wast in thine infancy? Thy strength and stature more thy years admire. Hath hundred winters passed since thou wast born, or thousand since thou breakest thy shell of horn? If so, all these as naught eternity doth scorn. Then higher on the glistering sun I gazed, whose beams was shaded by the leafy tree. The more I looked, the more I grew amazed, and softly said, What glories like to thee, soul of this world, this universe's eye? No wonder some made thee a deity. Had I not better known, alas, the same had I. Thou as a bridegroom from the chamber rushes, and as a strong man joys to run a race, the morn doth usher thee with smiles and blushes, the earth reflects her glances in thy face. Birds, insects, animals with vegetative, thy heat from death and dullness doth revive, and in the darksome womb of fruitful nature dive. Thy swift annual and diurnal course, Thy daily straight and yearly oblique path, Thy pleasing fervor and thy scorching force, All mortals here the feeling knowledge hath. Thy presence makes it day, Thy absence night. Quaternal seasons caused by thy might, Hail, creature full of sweetness, beauty, and delight. Art thou so full of glory that no eye hath strength thy shining rays once to behold? And is thy splendid throne erect so high as to approach it can no earthly mold? How full of glory, then, must thy Creator be, who gave this bright light luster unto thee. Admired, adored, forever be that majesty, silent alone, where none or saw or heard. In pathless paths I lead my wandering feet. My humble eyes to lofty skies I reared, to sing some song my mazed, mused thought meet. My great Creator I would magnify, that nature had thus decked liberally, but ah, 
and ah, again, my imbecility. I heard the merry grasshopper then sing, the black-clad cricket bear a second part. They kept one tune and played on the same string, seeming to glory in their little art. Shall creatures object thus their voices raise, and in their kind resound their maker's praise, whilst I, as mute, can warble forth no higher lays? When present times look back to ages past, and men in being fancy those are dead, it makes things gone perpetually to last, and calls back months and years that long since fled. It makes a man more aged in conceit than was Methuselah, or grandsire great, while of their persons and their acts his mind doth treat. Sometimes in Eden fair he seems to be, See glorious Adam there made lord of all, Fancies the apple dangle on the tree, That turned his sovereign to a naked thrall, Who like a miscreant striven from that place, To get his bread with pain and sweat of face, A penalty imposed, on his backsliding race. Here sits our grandam in retired place, and in her lap her bloody cane newborn. The weeping imp oft looks her in the face, bewails his unknown hap and fate forlorn. His mother sighs to think of paradise, and how she lost her bliss, to be more wise, believing him that was and is father of lies. Here Cain and Abel come to sacrifice fruits of the earth, and fatlings each do bring. On Abel's gift the fire descends from skies, but no such sign on false Cain's offering. With sullen, hateful looks he goes his way, hath thousand thoughts to end his brother's days, upon whose blood his future good he hopes to raise. There Abel keeps his sheep, no ill he thinks. His brother comes, then acts his fratricide. The virgin earth of blood her first draught drinks, but since that time she often hath been cloyed. The wretch with ghastly face and dreadful mind thinks each he sees will serve him in his kind, though none on earth but kindred near then could he find who fancies not his looks now at the bar, his face like death, his heart with horror fraught. Nor male factor ever felt like war, when deep despair with wish of life hath fought, branded with guilt and crushed with treble woes, a vagabond to land of Nod he goes, a city builds that walls might him secure from foes. Who thinks not oft upon the father's ages, their long descent, how nephews' sons they saw, the starry observations of those sages, and how their precepts to their sons were law, how Adam sighed to see his progeny clothed all in his black, sinful livery, who neither guilt nor yet the punishment could fly. To be continued. Namaste.